also we got to the now. What are we Shelbyville Town Council sitting as a board of license commission, victory license to Brianna Brownell, doing business at a rise up in Trish, Rhode Island. We do have the form in front of us of the victory license. It seems to be signed off by everybody. Operations are going to be operating a nutrition bar at the State of the Plaza. Is there a motion to approve the victory license? Mr. President, I'll make the motion for the statement before it. Uh, normally, we don't do this, but because it, I'm comfortable with everybody has signed off, including building inspector, fire marshal, tax collector. So I'm comfortable making that motion to approve a victuating license for 900 Victory Highway, Brianna Brown, Brownell. Rise up, nutrition, Rhode Island. Motion by Mrs. Wentz, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Lattin, Mrs. Bonnioli. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll call vote. Yes. 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 Next item under old business is item B, discussion by council board of other action on amendments to code of ordinances, chapter 11, article 14, open food establishments for a second reading. Everybody should have one, a copy of it in their packet. I believe it's been reviewed by the solicitor with the code of, um, changes, either in red or in blue, the additions in blue. And that seems to coincide with what we talked about at the first reading. So was there a motion? Um, that's correct. Uh, pursuant to the first reading, there were several changes, comments, modifications made. They've been incorporated. Uh, and um, unfortunately, recently today, I've been informed uh, by the vice president that I made some typos. Uh, I can go through them briefly, and I do have a clean copy with that. What I was hoping is I could recite the typos, ask the board to let me give it another final reading so that any final form you vote on would be subject to final corrections. So we can either go through them, they have typos. Uh, unless I, I, am I right, Mr. Vice President? Are there any substantive changes? No, substantive, no, it's spot on. It was just some. Uh, I have them, and I can go through them, but I, I think that if you allow me to. Uh, if you're satisfied with the form, vote the form subject to uh, adoption of any additional uh, typographical errors pointed out. Uh, on final we're going to make a gender, gender neutral as well. And what I do have, just so you know, I do have like a, a blank sheet. So if you vote on it, you can sign it tonight, and I'll, I'll get the clerk a clean copy of the ordinance so that we don't have to do this another night. It's up to the council. I'm just trying to explain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to reiterate, the substance is perfect. It was just pick up a lot neater than I would have done mistakenly. It's easy. It's easier to look at somebody else's work <laughs> than your own. I thank you for that. With that, with that said, is there a motion to approve for second reading? So. Motion by Mrs. O'Hara. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Bonnie. Only discussion. I, I do have a question. Does this prevent an ice cream truck just driving food down? Well, you know, it's interesting. Without, uh, without a, mobile, uh, a mobile food permit license, the way I read it is yes. And he can't ring his bell either. <laughs> well, no, I think he could. I think uh, there's certain limitations on that. Okay. Uh, I mean, the state doesn't get into that. What we did was, just so you understand, there's two pieces, of this, right? The state took over the whole health review of these trucks. You're selling food, you got to go to the State Department of Health, you got to get a mobile food um, uh, license permit before you can come to our town and get a licensed operator truck. Okay. Now what, what the, the state law says, just like our original vendor, uh, vendor license say, mm -hmm. vendors have to follow the rules of the council. So they're going to come before you to get approval they have to say what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, and hours, location, and so on. You could say it's okay to ring about. That'll be when they, when they come up to you for approval. But they have to have this permit first. Um, I mean, I'll defer to them. Uh, Actually, I think this makes it easier for that person because they don't have to do licenses. As, um, they were, um, this is an action that was um, driven by the business community. 
make it easier for them to operate for all the state. Thank you. So they get a state permit, and then they can submit to the town for a permit, and they can do it online, so it makes it good enough to come before us. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Yes. 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 Mr. President, um, uh, we've only got a few items left, but we've got a very dedicated volunteer who's been waiting here. Uh, can we move up by the day to meet him? Everybody was enjoying the exhibition. I suspect it's probably not the case. They want some. Let's move up by the day on the new business. Discussion by Colin Boyle about John Payne with the Eastern Architects of the Farmsdale School Restoration Renovation. Association and authorization for signature. We do have a letter from Mrs. Paris, the treasurer, looking for payment of a bill to Eastern Architects in the amount of $500. Mr. President, I'll make the motion to approve Eastern Architects in the amount of $500 for, the, for work at the North Smithfield Heritage Association. Second. Motion by Mrs. Zawinski, seconded by Mrs. O'Hara. Any other discussion? Hearing none, no call vote. Yes. 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 Next is item B, discussion by council voter on the action on request for exemptions from water use fees, sewer use fees, and sewer assessment for a heritage hall located at 101 Green Street, Central Heritage Association. <laughs> Actually, I was a, a, a gravestone the other day that I shouldn't have, so I'm paying the price tonight. But, uh, so it doesn't have your name on it next time. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> or any one of ours. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm worried about losing a volunteer. <laughs> um, so, um, I know you, you're, you're probably wondering after you, you were so kind to us. Uh, during the budget process, why we're back here tonight. But uh, I just want to let you know that we sincerely appreciate all the support that you've given us. Um, the, uh, the, the water and sewer uh, for the Heritage Hall that, that, uh, that we own, um, and we're asking that, that you waive the, the assessment and the, the usage, usage fee, I'm sorry. Um, for that, as, as, as well as the um, water. Um, it amounts to about $2,000 a year. Um, that's, that's money that we have to go out and raise um, to, to pay for. Um, and it, 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 all of the fundraising we do, we have a budget of about, about a little over uh, $17,000. Uh, and that's mostly to operate the schoolhouse and heritage hall. We've got a few hundred dollars we, uh, that uh, up until this year we were able to give to the cemetery volunteers. And because of your grant, we're going to be able to give them more now. Um, we're also able to uh, start a, uh, a history night each month with that money that you gave us. That offsets some of the, some of the utility costs. But still, two thousand dollars for uh, a strictly volunteer organization—it's still a lot of money for us. And so we're we're asking you to consider um, waiving those fees. Everything we do is is for the community's benefit. Nothing we get nothing out of it. Um, we're just asking to be able to devote a little bit more time to to uh, preservation projects and the promotion of the town's history. Uh, one of the big things that that we're committed to doing. Uh, is the, the town's 150th anniversary that's coming out in 2021. Um, and we're hoping to, to uh, do an update book on the next the 50 years since the, the last centennial book that was, that was printed. Um, and it's going to take, but it takes a, a tremendous amount of research. Uh, the Woonsocket Call is, is being very generous and allowing us to access their archives, but there's nothing digital. We have to go in and go through each newspaper to look at each, to find the, the things that that are that are interesting that, that we want to put in the book, and then we have to go to another 
box of negatives and go through the envelopes of negatives to find the photos, the, the photos that we want to put in the book. It's just tremendously time consuming and so anything that you can do to lessen the fundraising burden and let us do the, the other stuff would, uh, would help tremendously. President, I've already spoken to Chief Keene about this. Um, and I need to remind that the sewer and water bills and assessments are all um, uh, a challenge, I guess. First, um, assessments are based on project cost and then delivered based on a formula. Um, I'd have to suggest to you that the only way that I can think any of this can, can work is actually that the burden stays with the, um, the, the, the owner of the property, uh, in this case, and the town uh, completely, you know, not just the, the water users or the sewer users, because that's what, you know, as, we, as I've explained, the water users are only, there's only 600 water users in the town. There's, something on the order of 4,000 um, houses in the town. Um, if you just excuse the, the water obligation, you are excusing that uh, benefit to the 4,000 at the cost of the 600. And the same thing with the sewer circumstance, that if the sewer numbers are bigger and that there are more sewer users that are on that system, um, but it's still a, a situation where it's not the whole town. Uh, you'd be passing along that cost, big or small as it is, to the, the you know, basically the eastern half of the town with the western half not contributing. And to the credit of, of the association, what they do is benefit the entire town, not just east, west, water, or sewer. So, um, and obviously, as I said, the, start, the sewer assessment side becomes, uh, I think that's a slippery slope, that if we do that for one, Regardless of who it is, we get it uh, potentially pushed back at us for uh, others. And I, I just encourage that this be considered in the budget process uh, with perhaps a circumstance where a, um, you know, a, 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 uh, a justifiable number be associated with it. I, I, agree. I mean, this group has just done marvelous work. Um, in both buildings. Um, I have some hope. I mean, I, I've spoken to the chief about it and other members about perhaps the group having interest to take over um, the Memorial Town Building uh, as a third uh, piece of their um, interests um, for the long term of the community, uh, perhaps to be used more as a museum and a, uh, a safe place to house many of the things that, that the commission can no longer can uh, has the space to be able to display. Uh, so I'm, I'm a supporter and a fan of trying to relieve their burden. I have to just caution as to how we do that is of critical importance. Yeah, that was, that, that it was, also is something that should go before the school commission too as it relates to use and uh, unless you just simply decide as a council to pick up on, on the budget. That was a concern that we got to the point of a, of a motion that those are um, enterprise funds, actually, so it's, it doesn't fall under our purview, and that maybe the right way to do this would be like with the land trust, where they have, an, they have insurance that covers themselves. We, we fund that insurance for them. This may be the same type of process where we fund it through the budget, and, and that's the way to handle it. That we, increase, we increase the stipend, or whatever you want to call it, that we, that we grant to the heritage thing. I don't know how we... Yeah, we could say hey, we're not going to pay the enterprise fund. There's money to cover it, but it's not the right. It's not the right way to handle it. You also need to keep the users responsible too. You can't be selling water out of the. Sure. Not to suggest that. <laughs> to the the They're going to sell water to the power plant. <laughs> 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 but I think uh, the administrator of the president might like, I was sharing those same sentiments, and Richard, when you were walking up on road. So I, I think we all, we want to make sure that the heritage has a, want to make sure that it's done right. And I think the budget process is the way to do it. Uh, possibly if you could hold out one more year, and we'd certainly, I know, do I have one more year? 
<laughs> I certainly would support it. I think it was generally um, put forth that you needed an increase anyway, and now there's a good cause and justification for doing it. No, we can certainly wait another year. We've waited this long. Absolutely. Time. We'll be appreciate the doing. consideration. I think that's, I think that's the way to handle it. Yeah, because I, you know, I can anticipate other well-meaning and well-serving uh, organizations coming out and saying, "Me too." Well, that's actually that's how we get the idea. Because there are other organizations that, that enjoy a waiver. So, but that's, you know, <laughs> so we can. Uh, bottom line is, we can serve a waiver and anything that, that we feel comfortable with. Uh, we appreciate again the support. That's terrific. We appreciate all that you do. So. Thank okay, you. Thanks, Jake. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next slide is discussion by Council of Order Action on Amendment to Code of Ordinances, Section 11 7, including the number of retail, al retail alcoholic beverage licenses. Second reading, you do have it here. Um, we had first reading that we were increasing it to no more than 13, which is currently two more than we had because we do have one person that's looking for one, it will leave us with one in our pocket. So this is for second reading. Is there a motion to move Question, Mr. President, that the uh, corporation or the individual that's looking for a liquor license, are they going to be serving food as well? Meal taxes? This second. individual. This, this individual or corporation that's looking to acquire a liquor license is it going to be a food and beverage location? It's, it's back at the plaza. Look at the, the restaurant back at the plaza. Oh, okay. So the meal that's, taxes. That's, okay. that's, that's, right. that's what I was told. That's who's looking for it. So, that's and we don't have to grant them. You know. They have one we, no, we, we're, we're creating it. We're creating it. We didn't grant it yet. So. We could have two. They'd have to come before us. We could refuse the granting of the license. We're just creating, we're creating space because we don't, we don't have any more. There's a motion to approve. Second so, reading. So moved. Motion second. by Mrs. Lansky, second from Mrs. O'Hara. Any other discussion? Roll we'll call vote. Mrs. Bible. Yes. Mrs. O'Hara. Yes. Mrs. O'Hara. Yes. Mrs. Yes. 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 Yes.